Hello everybody, this is Jaron and Brett from arenareef.com. Um, today we decided to do a video about chillers and cooling your aquarium now that we're in the summer. And we hopefully see if we can help you on out with finding out how to cool your aquarium down, how to use your chiller, how to pick one, and what's right for your tank. Um, so first off, Brett, have you ever had a problem with a tank that's too hot? Um, actually, recently, yes. My AC in my, uh, my apartment actually went out, so um, yes, it did get a little too hot and I did have to use a fan to cool it down. Yeah, so there's many reasons why you could need to chill your tank. So one thing we kind of want to start out with is what temperature should your tank be at? And um, I know as Brett and I are product support guys, the way we often get this asked is what temperature is the ocean? It's kind of like asking what temperature is the land? You know, it is a lot of temperature in there. Mm -hmm. But in, <laughs> in general, I'm going to recommend that your tropical freshwater aquariums set at about 80 degrees, your um, marine aquariums that are tropical at 78, and then if you have a cold water aquarium, like um, goldfish or koi, or in salt water, it could be um, cold water anemones or the Catalina gobies, you may want to go to 60s, you know, 68 or even 70. Um, those aren't very common, but they do exist. So first off, why would you want a chiller? Your tank's too hot. You know, if your temperatures are exceeding those, especially by a lot, your tank is just too hot and it can get dangerous for your animals. Mm -hmm. um, and you may think, you know, those cold water species that some people have, you're almost always going to need a chiller. There's just no way else to keep your tank that cool. But even if you have warm water species like most of us do, it still can get pretty hot. Generally, your tank is going to run a few degrees warmer than your house because you got lights and equipment, pumps, making heat. So if you keep your tank at 80 degrees, seeing a temperature of 84 isn't unreasonable. Um, and if you're wanting to get a temperature of 78, that's you know a six degree difference there, and we have to decide how we want to tackle it. Um, so in addition to keeping things cool, one thing people don't consider is oftentimes a lot of the chillers and fans can really save you money. If you wind up wanting to keep your temperature at 78 degrees and realize that you need to keep your home at 75 to keep it there, even when you're on vacation, well now you're paying the electric bill of your air conditioner to chill your entire home just for the sake of the tank. And here when we're in Arizona or in the, the western United States, it'd be a great idea to turn the air up when you're out of town or even when you're out during the day, save some money and let the chiller take care of your aquarium so you're not paying that huge energy bill. Um, another thing is like Brett said, when the AC goes out, does that mean your whole tank's gonna die? <laughs> so if you're in a place where it's very, very hot, even if you don't need the chiller, it could be, you know, the chiller is expensive, it's a thousand dollars, but I have ten thousand dollars worth of animals. I really want to keep them safe. That you know, they're more than just dollars. There are things that I've grown and have an emotional connection yeah. with. That chiller can save them in an event of a failure. So with that, we're going to go ahead and proceed to talking about chillers and also fans and other methods of how to keep your tank cool. This is the Aquacool Aquarium Cooling Fan. Um, this is more of a portable hang on the back um, cooler. Um, Jaren, can you tell me a little bit more about this? Yeah. So fans in general they're a lot cheaper than chillers. So if you notice your tank's getting really hot, before you spend, you know, could be $1,000 on a chiller, could be $500 on a chiller, it's good to try a fan that's less than 30 bucks and just see if that solves your problem. So a good example of where you might want to use this is actually the BioCube behind us. Um, this tank is sealed with a sealed lid. It's a good idea if you have a hot tank to take the lid off and let things ventilate. In this case, the lighting's all built in. We didn't want to take it off. Uh, water started to heat it up to 82, 83 degrees. Do we want to put a $500 nano chiller like this JVJ on it? Well, we'll try the fan first. And these Zoomed fans are really nice because they have an extendable portion that allows the fan to go through the holes in the back of the all-in-one. Okay. And just by adding this fan, this tank is now at 78 degrees where it should be. So it's always our first recommendation to try a fan before you go and look at a chiller, and that may solve your issue. And how loud can that be? Well, it's as you can hear behind the tank, it's the loudest part of the tank. Yeah. Um, and it's just one of the downsides to fans is that they're loud. Now, my recommendation to anybody considering a fan is always buy the biggest fan you could possibly buy. And the reason for this is when it comes to moving the same amount of air, or so many cubic feet of air, mm -hmm. a big fan on a low speed is always quieter than a small fan on a high speed. 
So some of the other fans you may look at, like this ice cap one, come in a four inch and a three inch. Unless you absolutely can't fit the four inch, I would always, always go with the four inch, just because it's gonna be quieter than the three inch if it's at that lower speed. Okay. And talking about the ice cap fan, this is a completely different style of fan. Yeah, so the ice cap fan is less for cooling the tank water itself, it's for cooling your stand, your canopy, or other equipment. Uh, so the other day, um, I opened up my aquarium stand and felt this wave of just humid, hot air you know, brush over me. And really what was happening is I had the sump in my stand and all that heat from the tank and humidity was building up. So with these ice cap fans, what you can do is you can drill a hole with a hole saw in the back of your stand. And you can screw the fan on there and you can use that to vent the heat out, take that hot air out. Um, actually, this alone dropped the temperature of my tank from 80 to right around um, 78, 79, just by taking the heat out of the stand. Um, some other things about this is that moisture isn't really the best thing. If you have a wooden stand, the moisture can build up and hurt stuff in there. And also, the heat isn't the best thing. If you have any power supplies, the heat can damage them, ballast, the heat can damage. So venting the heat and moisture out of your stand can actually make some of your equipment last a bit longer. Um, these ice cap fans are nice not only because they mount very easily, but they're a variable speed. So the warmer your stand is, the faster they'll spin, and the cooler it is, the slow down. And again, I'd always recommend getting the big size because it's going to be quieter if it's spinning slower versus the, the small size. So this is not so much for cooling the water, it's more for cooling the air around the water. Yeah, air around the water, um, you're moving the heat out of your stand or your canopy. Um, but again, it can have an effect on your overall temperature and it's a really good thing to add. Okay. Yeah. And then this one, this one's a little bit different. I don't really know too much about the Tunzi fan. Uh, it looks like it does have a USB power, though. Yes, so the Tunzi Aquawind is a clamp-on fan. So for people with open-top aquariums, it basically clamps onto the side of the tank, blows air over the surface, and gives you some cooling. Um, Tunzi recommends this fan for about 75 gallons, so if you have a bigger tank, you can use about two of them. Just from blowing air over the surface and increasing the evaporation rate, you can get a cooling effect. Um, one thing to note with any kind of fan is it's very hard to get a cooling effect that's cooler than your ambient room. So if your tank's at 84, you want to go to 78, but the room's at 80, it's going to be very, very hard to get below 80 because you're blowing 80 degree air yeah. over the surface. So if you're going to want to drop below that, you're probably going to have to step over to a chiller. Okay. And then out of these three fans, which one is the loudest? Uh, from my experience, it's usually going to be the ZoomEd one. Um, it has a unique design that lets you use it on the BioCube and all-in-ones, mm -hmm. um, but these two are definitely quieter. Um, it's going to really depend on what speed these fans are running, because both the Tunz and the Ice Cap are variable speed. So if you're running at full power, they're going to be loud. If you're running a uh, lower power setting, they're going to be quieter. All right, so we've gone over some alternatives to chillers if you don't need a huge temperature drop in the fans. But let's now say, you need a chiller. You've learned your, your tank's getting too hot. You don't want to run your AC. You need a chiller. How do you go about choosing one? Which chiller is going to be right for you? So, Brett, have you used a chiller before on an aquarium? I've never personally used a chiller, but I do have some experience with some chillers. Yeah, I've actually used a lot of chillers. Um, being from Phoenix and being from the days when lighting was way more <laughs> hot than it is now, there was a time when pretty much every single tank we installed had a chiller. So there's a lot of things to consider when you're buying a chiller. Um, the first thing I'd say when you get a chiller is determining how big your tank is and how much temperature you need to pull down because that's gonna really help you in sizing your chiller. When you look at chillers, whether it's a JBJ or a Tico or any other chiller brand, they're typically gonna be rated in gallons, but also gallons per a certain temperature drop. So for example, um, I know the little Tico chillers are rated at a gallon rating, but that gallon rating is at a nine degree temperature drop. So if you're gonna ever plan on needing more than nine degree pull down, you're probably gonna wanna go bigger. And nine degrees is more than most people need, but if you have a cold water tank, or if you're nervous that your air is gonna go out and you can need a 20, 30 degree pull down, it's nice to go one size up. Um, going one size up just allows some room for air if there ever is a problem when you need a lot of chilling or like you said when your air goes out. Um, so as somebody who's never had a chiller before, um, which one of these ha have you looked at or do you think is a little bit different? Definitely the Teco. Um, 
after doing my research on it, I definitely do like the way this hood is actually almost customizable, I would say. And then this heat export shade, um, that's really cool. Um, it allows you to run it under the stand. Um, well, with the Arctica, you cannot, correct? Yeah, so generally the second thing I ask people if they know what size chiller they want is where you're going to put it. Mm -hmm. That's the next thing, where are you going to put a chiller? What a lot of people don't realize is the ways chillers work are basically like air conditioners. So they take the heat out of the tank and they blow it out. Now, if you have a stand and you had a traditional chiller like a JBJ or a Coral Life or any other brand, when it sits in your stand, it tends to just blow the heat into the stand, it builds up in the stand, it heats up the aquarium more, and makes things worse. You can actually burn out and damage the chiller too. So chillers are typically placed next to the tank. And the problem with sitting some next to the tank is you had to look at it, and it was a big piece of equipment next to the tank. Uh, and also you get kids coming up pushing buttons on it. So it really wasn't ideal. Um, so Tico kind of came up with an interesting solution to that, and that's that they created this vent hood, as Brett was pointing out. And what he's talking about by putting it in the tank is this top piece is movable. What most people would do is cut a small hole in the side of their aquarium stand, or if there's enough space between the wall and your tank and the back of your aquarium stand. You would then push this plate through, and then this chiller will blow the hot air out of the stand. This way you can hide the chiller in your stand where kids won't mess with it where um, it just looks a lot cleaner, but the heat will vent out. And it's really the only shovel that does that, and that probably makes it my favorite as well. Um, the last kind of chiller install we'll talk about briefly are the commercial JBJ chillers. Um, if you have a really, really, really big tank, you're probably gonna have to go with something commercial. And the way the big commercial JBJ chillers deal with this heat export is probably the best way. And that's that they're designed to the whole chiller sits outside your house. You run pipes through your walls, and then all the heat is vented outside. So with either the Tico or the small JBJs, heat's gonna go into the room, which means your air conditioner is gonna to have to chill it and work a little bit harder. It's not the ideal situation. With the whole chiller outside, all the heat goes outside, and your air conditioner doesn't work any harder. But obviously, you gotta have a chiller outside. You gotta yeah. run pipes through your walls to do that. And not everyone can do that. No, not everyone's gonna do that. So. Um, this deco kind of is a middle ground where you're not going to have it sitting right next to your tank looking ugly. It's going to be in the stand. It'll not vent into the stand where it can damage the chiller. Um, it will go into the room, so your air conditioner will work a little bit harder, but you don't have to run plumbing all through your walls. Um, these decos are also nice because in addition to that venting, which is the big thing for me, they have a built-in heater, so that way you don't have to have an additional heater to it. Um, and they're um, pretty powerful, come in a wide variety of sizes. Um, so with that, I hope that made chiller choice a bit easier for you. Again, find out what size you need, find out where you're gonna put the chiller. Once you know where you're gonna put it, you can decide which brand is gonna work best uh, based on that location, and then pick one that'll last. One thing we like to mention with chillers is they are expensive, but air conditioning bills are expensive. And more than that, chillers last. Most chillers will last you a decade or more. It's gonna be a long-term piece of equipment that's gonna be on your tank and not gonna break. There's not much maintenance cost with chillers, and generally you're just going to have to um, clean the screen with them that builds up dust just so that they can breathe properly. And then it's good to clean the insides with vinegar every few years, three to five years. But other than that, there's really not much maintenance, not much extra cost, you're not going to be replacing a lot of parts, so it is something that you buy for the long haul. If you have any other questions about chillers, feel free to reach out to support at marineandreef.com, and we'd be happy to help you out.